Hello, this is a quick how-to on just an explanation of how the configuration file works in SnakeMake. So SnakeMake has a feature where if you have a quick uh, something to show. So if you go to the SnakeMake official documentation and you go to defining uh, workflows, so official documentation on the left hand side of the sidebar you go to writing workflows this is a list of keywords uh, syntax that snake make can detect inside a sync file and I'll be going over the config file here so what this is so to demonstrate I have an empty snake file and I have a very basic uh, data data file so just to quickly show, I'm going to import pandas pd and then the read csv data.csv and this is the the basic idea of the input uh, data, our example data. So here, so let's make a quick rule, say uh, read data read output data right and it takes in an input and let's say data csv for now output is output dot csv let's instead of read let's do filter out filter data and then what this does is i'm going to first import pandas so it can read pd read csv and then it's going to read the input data and then data let's filter by i'm going to add a parameter params p value and then say 0.05 so here I'm going to do filter data by datas. So we want the p-value column to be less than zero point. Uh, the parameter params p-value. Then I want all of the columns. So filter, and then let's output. Uh, to CSV output and then I have to specify this if this is given as a list this object is given as a list basically so I'm just I just need to say the zeroth index of the output object same for the input so I do that so that has been made so if I want to run it I say snake make cause specify one and then say I don't need to specify the snake file because I've already made the name of the snake file with the capital S. Uh, say I want to output CSV. It reads in the data and it filters the data through this code and then it outputs. And let's have a quick look at the output. So as expected, we only have the two rows I want to Let's just get rid of the index. Oh. The output. And then just recreate that. Now we have, yeah, we don't have the index column. So, so the second, so the second row, this row was filtered out because it it is greater than 0 0.05 p-value. So now we've specified this, but maybe, for instance, we want to generalize this uh, pipeline. Say we want to make the p-value configurable. So I want the user of the pipeline to be able to configure the the p-value threshold. So what what the user can do is go into the snake file and then just manually change this say one and then that would you know it would 
change the threshold so that it modifies the our behavior of the, not not in this case because the p value is still lower than 0 0.5 okay but say for instance the the pipeline got so this is a very very basic pipeline so that's why it's easy to just for someone to go in the state file and then change this parameter but say the pipe pipeline is much more complicated there's loads of snake files and then there's a lot of uh, importing of different snake files which I haven't demonstrated yet but um, so it the pipeline got a bit complicated so the user might and the user might not be proficient with snake files and snake make so that they don't know where to go and look and change the parameters so what you could do instead is provide a configuration file which stores all of that uh, config configuration values so quickly demonstrate uh, there's I showed here that there's this syntax that snake make is able to detect so what we can do is config file and then we can say config.yaml and if we do that we haven't made this file yet so this is going to cause an error I'm just going to delete that try to run it and it's going to complain that um, there's no workflow defines a config file but it's not available it doesn't exist so let's make it so config.yaml so if you're familiar with the yaml good if you're not you can have a look at the yaml syntax so this stands for yaml is not a what does yaml stand for yet another markup language it's a joke i guess so you can have a look at the syntax if you want so basic syntax that's some explanation i'm sure there's a better documentation of yaml somewhere in the web you can have a look at that so just just going through the basics so say i want to uh, so hello and then there's store one and then this is a dict and then I can do something like uh, key one is value one and key two is value two. Just stop here. So now I've made the config file and snake snake make is going to if I'm running snake make using this snake file, this snake file is going to read the config.yaml file to read in the configurations so what this does is it makes a config object available now I'm going to run this without specifying I'm just gonna run it with, by specifying this output for now if we do that you see here if I scroll up as soon as I Executed snake snake make it printed out this this what this is This line is output from this line so you can see here from here. I This is a dictionary object. So I'll just do a quick print uh, type of config And then say print uh, config object starts from here and then and then ends here just as a demonstration okay so I'm going to rerun this just just for the print messages so you see this printed and then it printed the type of the object which is a dictionary and then it showed the content of the dictionary and then the print message here so you see config object is now available in this snake file I can use this in other places so let's make this a bit more uh, informative so you see here the I have it on the side close these you see here it read the config file and then it read this 
uh, content in as a dictionary. So here, hello text uh, the string object as the key and then the value of one in as the value for this key. And then here I made a, a dictionary here. So for the key, this is a dict. The value is a dictionary with multiple keys, key value pairs. Other things you could do is a boolean. So you can write true here. This will be a boolean. False. False. Bool. And then I think um, yes also is defined as a boolean as well. Uh, there are things like um, uh, true, I think is also defined as a boolean. Let's just have a quick look. You see here, boolean true is the Python object, the boolean object. And then boolean yes is also true instead of the string yes. Boolean again here is true and here false is false instead of like the string being false. Although, for instance, this will be specified as saved as a string instead of a boolean. That's one thing to note. Uh, there's also things like you can have lists like this and you can also have uh, well, uh, lists like this you see here this with the hello key there's the list value hello world there's the list value so you can have lists lists like this so so, but to make this something that's relatable to our rule here, what we could do is do something like this. So thresholds, and then I could do uh, p-value, no wait, p-value as 0 0.05. And then here I could do config uh, thresh, holds and then p value. I set it to 0 0.05. So let's let's do six. So that our second row is also filtered and is found here. Let's do that and then we delete the output and then rerun to recreate it. If we have a look, we have our second row. If we reduced it down again to 0 0.05, 0 0.04, so if we delete and then we run, now we have just these two. I can go even lower, 0 0.05 like this is oh, minus 10 to 100 yeah so if I do that and I should only have one one row yeah so here so uh, one thing to note if you're in the field of bioinformatics like me uh, I do a lot of uh, genome-wide significance studies and I do a lot of uh, 5e minus 8, this is a sort of widely used significance threshold. This is going to be evaluated as a string if you're not careful. So print uh, config and then if I say print the thresholds and then p value. So this this value is a string and this is probably this might cause an error but let's just go with it i just want i'm just interested in the printing value i want to run type i rerun yeah see how this is a string this is uh 
passed as a string instead of a float. What you could do is, um, one way is, you know, there's, with the, with the YAML syntax, it, it supports this type of uh, explicitly defining the data type. So I could add this, and that way this is going to be evaluated as a float. But if, for the user who's not familiar with YAML, they might get confused on what this is for, and they might delete it or ac accidentally uh, mishandle it so it, the pipeline doesn't function as, as how, you, how the user intends, intended. So what you could do in this case, because this is just a Python object, what you could do is just uh, p-value and then you could make that as a as a float you could sort of redefine it basically so I remove this uh, explicit data specification in the YAML file and I'm basically doing that within the snake file delete and then run oh fresh holds I've forgotten S if I do that ooh, again line 3 line 3 here do that you see here the print message because I defined, I converted the string into a float using the Python code, it, the value is converted to a float. And then this is being used as the parameter of the p-value threshold. So this is the only variant that remains. Let's just do like a, do that so I get no just to demonstrate. Now I have no rows because none of my three uh, variants exceeded the p-value threshold. So that is the kind of idea that you would use for config files. Obviously, this is just a very simple example. Uh, in reality, you have lots of different rules with lots of different um, parameters so you would kind of save all of the configurations within the config file so all of the parameter values uh, will be taken out from here so your user the person who's using your pipeline isn't going isn't going to need to go through the snake files because these will be in multiple files so it will be better to have these values within one place so that they don't have to worry about changing the the pipeline rules itself but they're just changing the particular values that you specified that will be used obviously you need to document well so that is uh, a job you have to do just before we end uh, just an example for instance I work in the bioinformatics field so, so I'm trying to so these. So, for instance, I might be making so the tutorial goes over some of that point as well. That will be useful to look at. So, for instance, I do a lot of. Uh, GWAS analysis and I might need to specify the p-value threshold for running this and you know I could be using uh, BCF tools to filter variants out I could be using Plink to filter out depending on the the minor allele frequency that type of things so that's the basic idea of how to use a config file